get the door. If you don't control this good phase with your hands, you're controlling it with your body. That's the whole point of the lesson. Because there you go. You've been thinking about facing path with hands and where you're going with the club. It's your body movement. So how do you get the travel that way? If you want to swing to the right more, when you drop and shift, you swing and do it towards me. There. Good, and that's directing your release. My slice was the thing I've been spent the last three or four years trying to eliminate. A slice? Yeah, okay. and I just about have, I think. Now I've probably sliced the whole time. So you've time been watching morning. the YouTube videos on how to correct a slice? All, all those, <laughs> all, all those, yes. Haven't we all? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I've just, oh, right, skip one. I've just about done it, I think. Awesome. Now if I can hit the ball like that every time. Look at that. I'd be very happy. So are you playing for a draw? Do you, do you no. get pretty straight? Can't hit a draw. You can't hit a draw. Never hit a draw. You've done it already. Not hit, never, hit a, never hit a draw. Inten in my... Intentional, you mean? I've, yeah, I've never hit a draw in my life. And I see you. I see that when you've got that little hoop, hoop up. I think that's just not possible. How would you try and hit a draw? I'm going to try and really get over there. Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, that was almost perfect. <laughs> didn't didn't block it out of the right at all. But I think because I was, I just talked to you about releasing my, releasing my hands. Yeah. I probably that's what made me do it. So if I try not to release my hands. Let's see what happens. Yeah. It's not badly hit at all. It's just. But there, I consciously tried not to release my hands. You're going to start to sense what parts of your body have real influence on this. And it, and it ain't your hands. It's got nothing to do with trying to steer it, because otherwise you're going to, you're going to have to slow the thing down. And it's going to become a block. Essentially, if you try and think about this, you slow that down, which slows this down, which slows this down, because you can't go faster, you can't speed up, you've got to slow down to control this. So the whole thing starts to become a block. So you lose your sequence. So then, you really lose the feel of the club head because everything's moving together. So what's actually controlling what here? But if you start to free up the sequence, now we can start to play around with timing, and it's timing that's gonna fade and draw it. All we have to do is put the body into a space that offers it an opportunity to adapt precisely. The subconscious will join the dots for you, the same as it does in every other form of your life, in movement, okay, whether you're cycling, walking, you don't have to worry about the terrain, you look at it and your body just adapts. Okay, there's a lot of computations going on, calculations, the algorithms are massive, expand, so they're infinite, right? You don't need to be getting involved with trying to control this thing with precision because you're going to interfere with the system. All you've got to do is recognise I need to where you need to be able to move and the body is going to start to create the movement for you. And guess what? The more you do it, the more you recognise what's going on. So, this will feel maybe strange, just using the ankles, because what you normally do, Peter, is you use your pelvis to go over there. But your inflections, and you're down here, so if I go like this, I don't have to release this golf club yet. If I'm up here, I've got to release it to get to the ball. But if I'm here, I don't have to. Toes takes you more into extension, heels take you into more of a hip flexion. And you've been living life, your posture likes to live on the heels. Heels, flexion, load into the floor, can't get off the floor with this so we've done that both ways and that's you've got fantastic movement so your movement vocabulary is superb now straighten your legs and just twist your hips brilliant might feel easier one way than the other now just move into a walking action and now with the walking action that's going to twist the belt buckle now this is all switched off so this can react to this whereas before if I'm just doing this if I'm just trying to I'm not using my, the ground. This is all, all tension. Whereas here, that's better, yeah. Just bend forward into a bit of flexion. Just tip forward, belt buckle down a bit more. Let one leg straighten, one leg extends. It's extreme for this exercise, but you just watch me as you do it. See, look at that now. When you take your attention away from your own body, try and mirror, that's how you learn to walk. Mirroring, brilliant. Now if you step back onto the mat, and now start to feel what that, how you can use the ground to rotate. Different feeling? Yeah. Just well, it's all down there, mm. as opposed to up here. And I think about swinging, I'm, I'm all up here, I'm thinking, I'm gonna move my shoulders. Yeah. And they just have to sort of catch up. But here, I'm not thinking about moving my shoulders at all. They can react now. And they're moving. Yeah. If I let them. And you can let them, yeah, exactly. And then they can, exactly. It's a different tension. So I can keep it just, 
there. And look how fast you can, can look how fast you can rotate your hips as well from the feet. Yeah, I can keep it there, not move my shoulders. And then I can let my shoulders go. You you've got a really good skill set with your movement because you're able to dis disassociate, which is fantastic. A lot of people can't disassociate the torso from the pelvis when they're doing this. And they find it really tricky. I'll do without a golf club, man. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. You don't go straight onto the motorway in your first driving lesson. Now, start with the club here behind you. Throw it forward to get a bit of momentum and then react with the drop and pop. So get a bit of momentum going. Just throw it, swing the club forward and then drop and pop. So don't stop though, start again. So you've got some forward momentum. There you go, to react to. Brilliant. Now you don't need to take the step on. Just use the drop and pop to give you some rotation. Now let your body rotate with it. So now you've got even more force because you've got rotation coming at the right time. Try that again. Where do you, where do you start? You'll feel it. Don't worry. Just throw the club forward, do the same exercise, and then now but let your shoulders rotate for a full backswing now. So you let yourself op it op open up on your backswing. So throw it forward and then open up back. There we go, yeah. Yes. Well done. There you go. That's what you need to do. So path more to the right. Sharp. Great sharp. This is how you're going to start to get a sense for where the direction of the swing's going. So you're not feeling path by just trying to swing the club head right. So what you're going to do then is you're going to, just like we did earlier with the wrecking ball, shift, rotate, shift, rotate. Then we're going to start to change direction of it. You can use your shift and direct the shift to go out there if you want to. So you can start to feel how the form of your body movement changes the direction of the swing as opposed to going over here. You don't control this club face with your hands, you're controlling it with your body. That's the whole point of the lesson, because you've been thinking about face and path with hands and where you're going with the club. It's your body movement. So how do you get the club to travel that way? Well, you shift that way, and then you let this thing rotate, and you, so your shift is so input. Yeah, you've got to be shifting that way. Step onto the board for me. Now it's going to be a shift, rotation, shift, then rotate. So shift first, then rotate. Shift first, shift back, and then rotate. So keep it behind you now. There, somewhat for longer. Now stand up to rotate. Look, that's it. Now keep it in front, drop, and then stand up to rotate. And then if you want to swing to the right more, when you drop and shift, you swing. You do it towards me. There, good. And that's directing your release. That's directing your sequence towards me. Yes, that's it. That's going to release out now. That can come out this way. You're extending through it. You're standing up. You're using your vertical. Bang! Look at that. How powerful that is. Yeah. Very, very solid. You're on the board and you could lean back against me here. And then no, no, no. push your hips forward and lean back with your shoulders. Just you, that's it. Your left hip's taking the load here. Do it again. Swing back. Now drop first into your left towards me. Now you can spring up off that left. That's it. Awesome. If you love the coaching and want to experience the effects of the training that you see with our pupils, you can purchase the GRFI system yourself by following the link in the video description. You'll get all the equipment and a two hour download covering all the fundamentals, exploring your movement and how you can use the ground and create those all important ground reaction forces and transfer them through to club head speed and experience the gains that you're seeing in the videos. Feel where that shift takes you. Yes, well done. And then let yourself lift at the end of it. That's it, stand up. The ball's gone. The ball's gone. You've got to stay down. Sure. Brilliant. Nice one, Peter. That's how you do it, Peter. You use your shift if you swing direction. You've had to rotate so much because you were relying on the upper body rotation, which was always dragging your swing direction left. But this is opening the door now for you to use vertical because you're not having to rely on your torso rotation so early. Shot. Just seems to happen a lot more naturally than it was before. As you say, this is really what I've been wanting. Just not worry too much about what the club's doing because 
and I'm not doing it eight hours a day. Today's just the start now of you starting to develop your game, really. I mean, it's, there's loads, so much potential there, scope for, for exploration. I've been driving a couple of drives. Awesome. Well done. Nothing. So you can draw it. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> with a drive with a driver too. Here. So you can shift more to the right, like you did with the yeah, pusher. Just, just Yeah, as you do that, it's the two together. Then, yeah. You don't want to be doing it I'm here. Gonna... Remember you're rotated back. So swing just swing back. Just do a practice. Just swing back. So as you're there, now you shift, drop and shift to the right. Yes, then you can spring. That fires it out. So you don't, so you, yeah, just try it. That's it. Awesome. You can draw it. Different feeling? Yeah. That's the one. That's fantastic. You're already recognizing now how you can start to regulate it. And that's that awareness that you develop developing. And again, you're going to develop this further. This is just the starting point today. But you'll have the confidence to... Well, it, that's a big part of it, having, having the confidence. So going out on the course to practice it, refine it on the range, take it on the golf course, or develop it on the range, refine it on the course, and build the confidence with it. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. All right, Peter. Fantastic. Brilliant. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Well done. That was brilliant. Really good. Do you feel like you've got what you want, what you needed? Yeah, I do. I, it's, I mean, I've got a lot, a lot to think about. And it's really, it's like I can practice till I'm blue in the face, but not practicing the right things. Waste time. And I, and, I, and I mean that after this lesson, I could go down to the range and I could practice think I'm, think I'm doing what you told me to do. And maybe I'm not. And that's you know. That's so what uh, you've got, you've got the exercises as the reset there, your reference. Yeah. And then you've got your video to refer back to, and you can always. What I would do is I would video yourself doing the exercises, not the swing. Okay. So are you doing the exercises how you think you're doing them, and let the exercises naturally filter through to the golf swing. Instead of analysing your golf swing to the nth degree, we don't know where that starts and ends. If you just uh, use that form of feedback from the video to make sure you're doing the exercises right. Now you've got a chance of filtering that through. And we know how well you can do it. I mean, brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, well done, you. Peter.